wonderful to be here in God's house this morning. I'd like to welcome our visitors who are here with us today. It's an honor that you're worshiping with us, and I pray that you would come and be with us again very soon. Our worship service today is Divine Service Setting 3. It begins this morning in the front of your hymnal on page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. To the and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Pause for a moment of silent confession before our Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you for your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro it appointed for the day, which you can find on your bulletin insert. Thank you. 
pray together the collect for the day found on that same bulletin insert. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Dispel from us the works of darkness and grant us to live in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, that our faith may never be found wanting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Zephaniah chapter 1. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guests. And on the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the officials and the king's sons, and all who array themselves in foreign attire. On that day, I will punish anyone who leaps over the threshold, and those who fill their master's house with violence and fraud. On that day, declares the Lord, a cry will be heard from the fish gate. A wail from the second quarter, a loud crash from the hills. Wail, O inhabitants of the mortar, for all the traitors are no more, and all who weigh silver are cut off. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the men who are complacent. Those who say in their hearts, The Lord will not do good, nor will he do ill. Their goods shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they should not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there. A day of wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no no need to have anything (coughs) written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober. Having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that we, whether we are awake or asleep, might life, might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. is written in the 25th chapter of St. Matthew. Jesus said, It will be like a man going on a journey, who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He had received the five talents, went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more. 
saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sowed and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Here endeth the gospel. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all the worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Please be seated. We continue with our sermon.
and mercy be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for a moment, think of that which you have that is your greatest possession. What is it that you own that exceeds all the other things that you have? Now, whatever that thing might be, ask yourself this. Is it a gift that I have for a time, but will someday have no more? Or is it a gift that I will have for all time? And is something that I will have forevermore? We know this to be true. Every gift that we have is a gift from our Lord. Every good gift and blessing that we enjoy in life is from His abundant mercy and grace to you and to me. We know that the gifts that we share as the body of Christ are diverse. Not everyone has the same gifts. Some have more, some have less. Some have different gifts than you and me. And we rejoice that our Lord has seen fit to make use of His children in these different ways. Now the parable that we have before us today, the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, is sometimes a parable that is used to highlight just that. That we have all of these gifts and talents from God, and that we are to make faithful use of them. And that God who entrusts these things to us will multiply them in unimaginable ways. Well, we know that's all true. I'm just not sure that that's what the parable is about. Now, let me explain why I think that. Matthew chapter 25, in my mind, is a really hard chapter for the faithful. Why? Because all three parables go together in Matthew chapter 25. And they are all directed to the faithful. Now think about that for a second. Everything said in Matthew 25, from the wise and foolish virgins to those who received the talents from God, many talents, beyond their imagination, making good use of them, but also those who are slothful and pay no heed to the talents they receive from God. So too at the end of the chapter, what we will hear next Sunday, the sheep, the goats, the righteous and the unrighteous, some who do for others for the sake of the others, and those who will only do if they know it will be rewarded. All of these things are said to us as believers and insiders. There's a feature in Matthew's Gospel, and I love Matthew's Gospel. Uh, if you can have a favorite Gospel, this is my favorite Gospel, at least for today anyway. It might change tomorrow, you never know. One of the things that is striking about Matthew's Gospel is the way that he uses language to confess our Lord. Those who look to Jesus and say, Lord, are, according to Matthew, the insiders. They're the ones who get it. They're the ones who understand that indeed in Christ we have the forgiveness of our sins. In Him we have life and have it abundantly. Those who do not get who He is, Call him rabbi, teacher, not Lord. This only works in Matthew's gospel. Don't try this in the other gospels. But in Matthew, we see this happening over and over and over again. In Matthew 25, those who are in the wrong call Jesus Lord. That's a striking thing. These people should have known better, and yet they didn't. This is a warning to all of us. Matthew 25 follows, if you have your Bibles open, follows Matthew 24, surprisingly. And in Matthew 24, Jesus is telling us about His second coming. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. We do not know when He is going to come. So we are to be sober. We are to be watchful. We are to be ready. We are to be those who have oil in our lamps. Not those who fail to have oil 
in their lamps. In Matthew 24, if you, I won't read through this, but in Matthew 24, he anticipates all of the parables that we read about then in chapter 25. He says, some will get drowsy and sleep, but you, you be awake, you be alert. He says that I will entrust my property and my gifts to my servants, and some will do well, and others will squander those gifts. That's the parable that we have today. Now look at this. The parable of the ten virgins. We heard about this last Sunday. Those who have oil and those who don't have oil. What is all of that about? Those who have oil have received the gifts of God, the means of grace. They've delighted in the word and sacrament God has given to us to create and nourish faith in us that we would be ready when that bridegroom returns. Those who had no oil didn't have the time for those gifts, but they knew about those gifts. But they couldn't work those gifts into their own schedule. And then we come to the parable of the talents. The parable of the talents, we see three individuals. Now think about this. We have the, the owner, the man who goes on the journey, who entrusts to his servants talents. One gets five, another gets two, and another gets one. Now you have to have a sense as to what a talent is worth, and it's hard to get your mind wrapped around the value of a talent. A talent is the equivalent of about 20 years of wages. So when you receive five talents, that's basically receiving an entire lifetime of earnings. It's a tremendous amount of money. If we put that into a figure, it would be millions and millions of dollars. The one who receives the two talents, it's basically a half of lifetime of earnings and wages. A significant amount of money. And then finally, the one that receives the one talent. 20 years of wages. And yet, what does our Lord say about this? As He blesses the two that do well, I have put you over a little. A little? There's nothing little about five talents or two talents or one talent. It is a tremendous amount given to these servants. And what happens? Well, the one, in joy, does well with the five and brings back an additional five when the owner returns. The other does well as, as the other one, deviling, going from two to four. And then another buries it into the ground. What are these talents? Are the talents that we're reading about here, are these the wonderful gifts and the blessings that surround us in life? And as we faithfully make use of them, we will prosper in the things of this world? Well, that's not quite it. If that were it, someone like Martin Luther would say, I've done well, I fought the good fight. What did I end up with in the end? He ended up with a death sentence. He ended up with an excommunication. He ended up with a lot of grief and sorrow. And yet he was blessed mightily by our Lord. How so? The question I asked at the beginning, what is the good gift that we have that lasts forever and we will always have it? It's the gift of faith. It is the gift that sees that in the means of grace, in the very Word of God, in baptism and in the Lord's Supper, our Lord has turned us to Himself. That He has created us to be His children. That we could go forth in joy knowing that our sins are forgiven in Him. And that we have life and have it abundantly. Now the final parable will describe what that life looks like. But this parable of the talents is pointing us in a different direction. It is pointing us to the very thing that would give us the oil for our lamps. It is pointing you here to this place. It is Sunday morning that is to fill you and direct your every day. It is the very Word of God that you should seek to not only hear expounded and taught, but that you should seek to read in your own time. Why? Because these are the words of eternal life. The gift you have here is a gift for all time and forevermore. No one can take this gift from you. 
No matter what the world might bring to you, no matter the disappointment in life, this gift is invaluable. This gift is a five-talent gift that will indeed increase five-fold, many times more than you can even imagine. The gift of baptism. Do you wake up in the morning, as Luther suggests, make the sign of the cross and remember your baptism? Do you do the same at the end of the day? Do you live your life within your baptism? You've been buried with Christ and risen with Him. You are a child of God. Your sins are washed away. Luther says that in baptism, we have more that we could study than we could ever exhaust. Why? Because to live as a child of God is a remarkable thing. It changes the way that you see everything in life because you belong to Him and not to the world around you. Do you hunger and thirst for the very body and blood of our Lord given to us in the Lord's Supper? These incredible gifts are entrusted to all of us. Those who were given the five talents and the two talents with joy went forth doing the things that God had given them to do. And those talents continued to increase beyond their own imagination. Here's the point. We cannot go forth in this world doing the things that we do, rightly understanding the world around us, unless we find ourselves in the Scriptures as children of God. It is the scriptures that allow the scales from our eyes to fall that we would see Jesus in all that we do. That we could make sense of a world that is turned upside down. And in doing that, we end up doing what? Sharing with all of those around us the great treasures that we know. Bringing them back to this place. Bringing them to the Bible class on Wednesday or Sunday. Why? Because there's no greater gift than what the Lord has placed here for you and for me. But there's more to this parable, isn't there? There's also the one given a single talent, who did nothing with it. But there's even more than that. Do you notice what this, this person does? He's been given this incredible gift from God. A talent, again, is an Im- incredible value. He's an insider. He's been given the gift of eternal life and holy baptism. He has heard the word of God proclaimed. He understands that indeed Jesus is Lord and Savior. And yet what has he done? He has taken those gifts and he's ignored them. He's buried them in the ground. They have nothing to do with his every day. This is an arrogant man. He doesn't need to remember his baptism. He's sufficient in himself. He doesn't need the means of grace. And it goes further than that. When you despise the gifts of God, you despise the one who gives the gift. He begins to level accusations against the owner. At the end of Matthew 24, again, where Jesus anticipates this parable, he says that the servants entrusted with his property, some of them will rise up against those other servants. That's always how it is. Those who hear about the gifts of God, who for a time receive them thankfully, but then go their own way, they turn against God, and they turn against His people. They turn against those who would share with them the wonderful good news that we have in Christ. And that's what this servant has done. He's buried the talent in the ground. He has no interest in God because God is a hard God. He's a demanding man. And he begins to accuse him. The first two see what? See the mercy and grace of God. Overcome with his generosity. Overcome with thankfulness for all that he has entrusted to them. Not so, this last one. The gifts of God are never good enough. Nor can he ever find time for those gifts of God in his life. Again, he has a lot going on. He has other things to do. He knows about those gifts. He knows where they're to be found. He's buried them in the ground. He knows all about them. And when our Lord returns, He says what? 
He says, you will be cast into the outer darkness. You who once knew, who grieved the Holy Spirit, rejecting the good gifts of God, you will go your own way and you will be found in the outer darkness. And those who have received these gifts with joy, who have multiplied these gifts, will receive even more. Even more. One of the things that I marvel about with Scripture is that no matter how many times I read a familiar text of Scripture, I continue to see more and more. I can't exhaust the inspired and inerrant Word of God. This is a word that gives me life, and it gives me life abundantly. It changes everything, and it is something that I seek always to have, and I want more of it. That's the gifts of God. Baptism continues to deliver to you the promise of the forgiveness of sins. The Lord's Supper continues to feed and nourish you with the very body and blood of Christ. There is no other place to be than here. On Sunday morning. There's no better place to be than in the study of God's Word surrounded by His saints. Our God has lavished gifts upon each and every one of us. And the greatest gift that He's given to us is right here among the faithful, surrounded by the means of grace, surrounded by the teaching and the preaching of His Word, surrounded by the fellow faithful who can pray for us, who can lend a, a listening ear, surrounded by the fellow children of God, looking at His gifts, receiving them with great joy. So who are we? This is always the hard question. Who are we in this parable? I know, we would like to say we're the five talent guy. We're the ones that just receive with such great joy and look at the return that the, work, that the Lord works through us. Well, maybe. How about the two-talent guy? Maybe we're modest today. We say, I'm not a five-talent guy, I'm just a two-talent guy. Well, the truth be told, we probably are that. But we're also the one-talent guy, aren't we? We're also the ones who get busy with life who sometimes forget about the incredible gifts that God has bestowed on us. We forget to be thankful for that baptism every day. We forget to be reading God's Word, even if it's a little bit of God's Word, delighting indeed in His wonderful promises and gifts. We find ourselves occupied on Sunday mornings. Sometimes we can't make it to the Bible class. It's just too early. Sometimes we can't make it to church because after all, we've worked so hard during the week. We do need at least one day for ourselves. And then those days begin to add up and they become weeks and they become months. Or maybe we're in church, but maybe it's weeks and months where we never open our Bibles. Maybe it's weeks, months, and years where we never go to the Bible class to hear again the Word of God taught to us. What greater thing could there be than to be surrounded by the incredible gifts of God in the places where God would have us hear these things. And why is all of that important? Because it is the gift of eternal life that we have. And it changes us. And it gets us to do things that we could never imagine. Those are the things that we'll see at the end of chapter 25 in the final parable that our Lord has. Dear friends, we who delight in God's gifts, delight in the joy of our Master. And in delighting in that joy, we share it with those around us. We invite them to come to a place like this, where they too can receive a gift that will never end, a gift that is forevermore, the gift of eternal life that we have in our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.
At this time, we will gather our offerings, and I invite you to register your attendance in the book at the end of your pew. Prayer is listed in your bulletin. We will pray for Robert Self, who is recovering from surgery, David Seymour, who is undergoing cancer treatments, the family of Wally Williams, who was killed in an auto accident last night, the Wilson family on the death of Rhonda, Linda's sister-in-law, and Regina, who is, has stage four pancreatic cancer. Please rise. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty Father, as the great day of the Lord draws ever nearer, when your Son will return to judge the living and the dead, we pray that you would grant your people to remain faithful to the end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious Lord, though we do not know the day or hour of your Son's appearing, Grant that we would always be prepared by sending us faithful pastors and teachers who will boldly proclaim your word of law and gospel to us. That we may constantly be encouraged and built up in the faith through them. Especially, Lord, we give thanks and pray for John Jenkins, Carl Beckwith, Fred Reinhardt, and the Federwitz family. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Lord God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, help us always to be good and faithful servants who are diligent stewards of all that you so graciously provide. Especially grant us to be generous in speaking of the salvation that you provide for all through your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Everlasting Father, you have given us the gift of your creation. And though this world is passing away due to sin, we pray that you would preserve it for our use and provision until you usher in the new creation to come. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, we pray that you would grant healing and relief to all who are afflicted in mind, body, or soul. We especially pray, Lord, for Robert, David, for the family of Wally Williams, for the Wilson family, for Regina, for our brother Carly, for Pam, Kay, Willard, Linda, Cindy, Terry, Joanne, Chris, for Alan and Dorothy, and for all whom we now name in our hearts. Give them, Lord, the peace and comfort that only comes through Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Father, until your Son returns in glory, he has given us the supper of his body and blood to sustain us. Grant that all who receive this gift today may receive it in faith, trusting that it is given for them for the forgiveness of their sins and life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Lord, we give thanks to you for all the faithful departed. Grant comfort to all who mourn, that they may find peace and hope in the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament found on page 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, 
everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by His glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Your glorious name, evermore praising You and saying, when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent Your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank You that for His sake You have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask You not to forsake Your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by Your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve You. Through Jesus Christ, Your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with You and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Sing our final hymn of the morning. 